If you wanted to design an alien, you would design this. It has three hearts. It has blue blood. It has nine brains. It can taste with its skin, change its shape in a millisecond, and solve puzzles that would stump a young human child. It is arguably the most intelligent invertebrate the universe has ever created. It should rule the ocean. It should be building cities. It should be inheriting the earth. But it can't, because nature gave this animal a gift. And then, it cursed it. Inside this genius mind, there is a biological time bomb, a chemical kill switch waiting to go off. It lives fast. It learns incredibly quickly. And then, at the very peak of its life, it is programmed to destroy itself in one of the most gruesome spectacles in the animal kingdom. This is the dark biology of the octopus. We are about to investigate the tragic, self-destructive life of the ocean's lonely genius. Subscribe now. You'll never look at an octopus the same way again. Welcome to the anomaly. To understand the horror of the octopus's death, we first have to understand the miracle of its life. Because nothing about this animal makes sense on Earth. Let's start with the blood. Our blood is red because it uses iron to carry oxygen. Iron is common. It's efficient. But the octopus? Its blood is blue. It uses copper, a substance called hemocyanin. It is a thick, viscous fluid that allows it to survive in the freezing, oxygen-poor depths of the ocean. But copper is heavy. It is hard to pump. So, evolution didn't just give it one heart. It gave it three. One huge central heart to pump blood to the body. And two smaller auxiliary hearts just to force that thick blue sludge through the gills. And then, there is the mind. We keep our brain in our skull. A centralized command center. The octopus does not trust a single commander. It has a central brain, yes. But two-thirds of its neurons are not in its head. They are in its arms. Each arm has its own mini-brain, its own personality, its own desires. If you cut off an octopus's arm, which happens in the brutal world of the reef, the arm doesn't die immediately. It continues to crawl. It continues to hunt. It can even grab food and try to pass it to a mouth that is no longer there. This is a distributed intelligence, a hive mind of one. It allows the octopus to perform feats of multitasking that are impossible for humans. It can crack a crab shell with one arm, explore a cave with another, and fight off a predator with a third, all while changing the color of its skin to match the sand beneath it. It is a master of its environment. It is the ultimate survivor. And that is what makes its fate so terrifying. Because this animal, this genius, is born with a fatal flaw. A flaw that kicks in the moment it decides to reproduce. For the octopus, love is not a romance. It is a suicide mission. Let's look at the male. He is smaller. He is cautious. And he is terrified. He knows that the female is larger. He knows she is cannibalistic. He knows that if he gets too close, he won't be a mate. He will be a meal. So, he has evolved a tool. One of his eight arms is specialized. It is called the hectocotylus. It functions as a detachable delivery system. When he finds a female, he keeps his distance. He extends this long, specialized arm, reaching out to her like a bomb disposal technician. He gently inserts a packet of sperm into her mantle. And then, he runs. In some species, the male is so terrified of being eaten that he doesn't even make contact. He literally rips his own arm off, hands it to the female, and swims away, leaving his severed limb to finish the job. But escaping the female doesn't save him. The act of mating triggers a hormonal cascade in his body. He stops eating. He wanders aimlessly. His complex, nine-brained body begins to shut down. Within weeks, he will die. He is a disposable biological unit. But his fate is a mercy compared to what happens to her. The female takes the sperm. She finds a den, a cave, 
a crevice, a safe, dark place, and she lays her eggs, thousands of them, strings of delicate, translucent pearls hanging from the ceiling of her cave. And the moment the last egg is laid, the kill switch is flipped. It starts in a tiny organ between her eyes, the optic gland. This gland is the grim reaper of the octopus world. It releases a flood of steroid hormones that completely hijacks her brain. It creates a state of singular, obsessive focus. She becomes the guardian. She positions herself over the eggs. She gently blows water over them to keep them oxygenated. She cleans them with her suckers to keep algae away. She is a perfect mother, but the hormones also issue a command. Do not leave, do not hunt, do not eat. The starvation begins. For weeks, sometimes months, she sits there. Her body begins to consume itself. She burns through her fat reserves. Then her muscle, her skin loses its color. That vibrant, shape-shifting camouflage fades to a pale, ghostly white. She develops lesions, sores. She is rotting alive, but she doesn't move. If a crab walks right past her mouth, an easy meal that could save her life, she ignores it. The optic gland has rewritten her survival instinct. It has turned off her hunger. This is called senescence, the biological death spiral. But starvation is just the beginning. As the eggs get closer to hatching, the hormones ramp up. They push her brain into madness. This is the part that researchers call the self-destructive phase. She begins to act erratically. She spins in circles. She smashes herself against the walls of the den. And then, the horror starts. She begins to groom herself. Too hard. She tears off her own skin. She rips chunks out of her own mantle. In the final stages, she does the unthinkable. She eats her own arms. She isn't eating them for nutrition. Her digestive system has already shut down. She is mutilating herself. It is a chemical psychosis, a biological programming that demands she destroy her own body to ensure she never competes with her children. She is literally tearing herself apart to make room for the next generation. And then the timing aligns perfectly. Just as her body is failing, the eggs begin to hatch. Tiny, translucent babies, perfect miniatures of their mother, burst from the eggs. They float up into the water column, ready to face the world. And as they ascend to begin their lives, she takes her last breath. She dies. Right there in the den, a hollowed-out husk surrounded by the birth of her thousands of children. And this brings us to the true tragedy of the octopus. The reason they will never rule the world. Those thousands of babies floating away, they will never meet their mother. They will never know their father. They are born alone. Everything that the mother learned in her life, how to solve puzzles, how to open jars, how to escape predators, dies with her. It is erased. Every single octopus has to learn the world from scratch. They are a genius restart over and over again. That is the life of an octopus. They are trapped in a loop of brilliance and erasure. Evolution has capped their potential. It has given them a Ferrari engine and then cut the fuel line after one lap. Why? Why would nature create such a cruel system? Perhaps it's a safeguard. Imagine an octopus that didn't die. Imagine an octopus that lived for 50 years. That taught its young. That passed down the secrets of the ocean. With nine brains, camouflage, and three hearts, they would be unstoppable. They would be the apex predator of the entire planet. But nature doesn't like superpowers. It likes balance. So it installed the optic gland, the kill switch, the guarantee that the genius of the deep remains lonely, short-lived, and ultimately tragic. So the next time you see an octopus in an aquarium, looking back at you with that strange horizontal pupil, 
don't just see a cool animal. See a prisoner. A prisoner of its own biology. A creature that is too smart for its own good and too dangerous to be allowed to live. It is the alien that walks among us. But unlike the aliens in the movies, it isn't here to conquer. It's just here to die. If you thought the octopus was tragic, click the video on your screen right now to see why spiders are actually biological robots. You will never look at a cobweb the same way again. For more investigations into the dark, bizarre, and unbelievable side of nature, subscribe to The Dark Biologist. You will never look at the world the same way again.